Don't turn it prematurely, you understand? Magnetic engine part two. Hey there, fellows. We recently stumbled upon this YouTube video depicting a peculiar engine. We've got us some magnets, so let's make us something even better. Let's go. We weld on a Conrad journal, cut out any excess material, and we got a crankshaft. So here's where we're at with this. We've uh, pretty much fully assembled the engine. It's got a wooden foundation. The reason for that being we want as little interference as possible with the magnetic field. The crank was custom made from scratch out of pipe. It's mounted via some bearings. And also we got some custom cylinders which we made out of plastic. Again, to minimize any interference. The cam is a straight shaft connected to the crank directly via a chain. And the drive ratio is one to one. And over here, there's something else I want to show you. Even when you just got one magnet on there, the engine is already sort of working. You have plenty of resistance. Of course, that could be a product of there barely being any metal in there. Here's how powerful a field we are dealing with. I'm holding one magnet. The other one is lying on the ground. And I'm separating them with my hand, just in case they decide to pull themselves together. And so check this out. I barely bring them close, and this one is already moving. So that's a pretty mighty magnetic field. And if we were to put them onto one axis and attempt to press them together... Nope. Even considering how much I weigh. So chances are this might even work. Why are you just turning it over? Hold on. Did you try starting it? Yeah, I think you really have to yank it. Oh, holy cow! What do you know? It works! But now the big question would be... How do we switch it off? Perhaps try using a crowbar? Yeah, go right ahead. That took a bit of force. But we got it to stop. Is it gonna pull in first? Don't turn it prematurely, you understand? Okay, shall we fit it to a car? The cylinders are 100 mil. This engine is like 50% longer than a stock Lotta unit. It won't fit, we need to do some hacking. We will damage the radiator frame, but no worries. And we've got the engine installed. And uh, we did have to trim a few things here and there. So this wasn't necessarily a simple matter. 
I mean, this is a mostly wood-based unit with just the bare minimum of metal left, to make sure there's as little interference with the magnetic field as possible. Okay, and now it's time to try this out. You guys ready? Let's go. Okay, there we go. Let's go. Come on now. And it's moving under its own power. Very nice. It's not fast enough. We're doing all right. It steers and... Uh, we gotta stop it somehow. Where are the brakes? Here we go. Come on. Slow down, come on. What's the problem? Stop already. Well? What's going on? Why isn't it stopping? Okay then. I guess I'll use an alternative braking method. Oh, for real? Get the crowbar, let's try turning the thing off. Yeah, what else are we gonna do? Holy! That is one engine! But what do you do if you've got an oncoming car? But then I can throw it into neutral and come to a stop. I mean, duh, that's basically what I just did. We were going a bit slow, but we saw some slip in first gear, like holy cow. This engine is something. Okay, there we go. There we are. Now that is... We are carrying quite a bit more speed in second. Yeah, it's moving confidently. Brake? Braking and... no. I guess I steered into that pile of snow. And this time, while in second gear, it wasn't able to carry on. Okay, now I know how to switch it off. Just keep it in second, it doesn't have enough power to spin the wheels. And uh, there it is, guys. I put it into second, the car moves at a higher rate of speed, and uh, switching the engine off has now become simpler. You lodge it into something and it's out of steam. And here's another interesting thing. I uh, go to turn it over, and uh, here you can see that there is quite a bit of space in between the magnets. We had to compromise the engine's power to prevent stuff from coming into contact. So we basically decided to play it safe, I guess. Wouldn't want anything to break early on. But what we can do is amplify the magnetic field, so to speak. Make it so that, you know... Anyway, the point is we want to bring them closer to each other while making sure there's no contact going on. Leave a little bit of space, at least. Should I be doing this? Okay, I see. Which way do I turn it, though? Oh, holy cow. Yeah, I think that should do. Wrench? Oh, here it is, stuck to the magnet. Let's see now. There we are. Here we go. Holy cow. Reducing the gap between the magnets has worked wonders. Look at that. Holy cow. We are really hauling. And I'm in second. I mean, it is all connected directly, but what matters is the car is moving. And quite nicely at that. How do I stop it, though? I'm gonna have to look for a pile of snow. There we are, I can see one. And that is going to be the end of the line. At this speed, nah, it's not gonna be a bad crash. Engine off. There we go, and holy cow! Isn't that something? Neat. It's fun to drive, though stopping is a bit sketchy. But then not really at this low of a speed. 
The brakes aren't cutting it. So there you are, that's the engine, and it's quite a bit different compared to our previous design. This one actually works, and very well at that. And that's all I got for you, you saw it all for yourselves. Tell us what you think in the comments, and that's it for this video, catch you later. But the curious thing is that a lot of people fall for this nonsense and think that such an engine will actually work. But let's remember our 7th grade physics lessons. When we learned that the force that pushes the magnets away from each other is the very same force that doesn't allow them to converge. So this was quite obviously another prank. All in good humor, and that definitely does it for this video. Catch you guys later.